Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. Today I am going to make a cauldron shaped cocktail bar, so come on, let's do this. my breath by using my compressor. I am pretty much going to do this the same way that I made the model, just laying the plaster strips onto this ball. This was actually a happy surprise that this ended up being this weird funky shape. It's not perfectly round and because of the way it was made it has this weird separation here. I'm going to use that to my advantage. We're going to make this part and here the base of the cauldron and this will become the lip. And since this is an inflatable, I should in theory be able to deflate this and pull it out and make the entire cauldron in one piece. Just to make sure that I take every precaution possible, I am going to apply some Murphy soap that should act as a mold release. You could use cooking spray. I don't see why I should even need to coat this, but I'm just gonna do it anyway because the last thing I wanna do is apply all of this stuff, go through hours of labor, probably days of labor in my case, we all know how I work, and then find out that it won't release. If you have very sensitive skin and you are working with these plaster strips, you probably want to wear a pair of gloves. As soon as I'm done cutting these, I will throw on a pair of gloves. I have done way too much plaster casting work that my hands break out into a rash if I'm not careful. So I personally try to avoid wearing gloves whenever possible, If depending on the task that I'm doing because sometimes I feel like the gloves get in the way of you having that tactile connection with the material that you're working with. I use them sparingly and you'll notice that I do wear them when I'm dealing with chemical things but you know there are other things that I'm working with wire, working with other materials where I really need to feel the material so I, I won't wear them in those cases. Yep, took the gloves off, of course. Sometimes you really just need to feel the material. Suddenly wishing I had purchased two different color strips here so I could tell between the layering. Make sure I get even coats. Too late now though. It is what it is. Yeah, what you doing? Yeah, but you can't play with this mom because it's not good. Go on the big table. It's not safe here. Not safe for the little kitty. I'm in my okay to get crap all over clothes. I'm gonna skim this with some joint compound because I'm just not happy with the smoothness and I'm worried that if I go in to start sanding right now as is, it's gonna pull up some of the fibers in that stuff. And then I will be able to sand through the joint compound and hopefully get a smoother surface so that I can then go in with paint. I'm going with joint compound instead of plaster because of the open work time. Once the plaster starts to seize, it's a little bit more difficult to work with. This is just a decorative type object. It's not meant to be a giant major sculpture, so I don't really need the rigidity of the hydrostone. I need to save my hands. Sanding this joint compound is gonna be much easier than me trying to sand through the hydrostone. I have never done this before. I should point that out. A lot of the stuff I do is completely experimental. I've worked with these materials for years, but but here on this channel, I don't like to be spending months on end testing things before I film them. I'm kind of doing it all live here, testing it out, seeing how it goes as I'm doing. Again, this could be a total disaster, as I say often. I've been fortunate that a lot of things tend to work out for me, or I at least figure out a way to resolve issues that I might get. But, um, yeah.
Cauldron's all sprayed up. I'm really happy with the texture and the finish on this. Inside, I need a surface to put the cocktails on, but also I want to have a lit surface. I have this red acrylic. I'm going to make a cardboard template first. Then I'm gonna cut a frame out of some wood that will hopefully fit just recessed in the inside that this acrylic will sit on top of. I kicked my bandsaw to a slight angle so that I could cut this piece of wood on a slight angle because this is a tapering piece. It's not quite perfect, I just kinda guessed at an angle. To secure this piece of wood in, I'm just going to take some adhesive caulk and pump it into a couple areas, let it set up and dry, and then it should be good to hold. Now that I have adhesive all over my hands and probably somewhere in my head because I just stuck my head in this cauldron to make sure I have good coverage, I'm gonna set this aside and let that cure and I'm gonna move on to building out the base. So I have this leftover insert that I'm gonna cut another circle out of. When you see a cauldron or cast iron pot in a campfire, it would normally be mounted to a tripod. And because that this is going to be converted to a bar, having these big tripod spikes out and a dangling cauldron that would be swaying back and forth would not be practical, probably dangerous, especially if there are cocktails involved. So <laughs> to keep things safe, I am going to build something that looks like a stool with just an open ring that the cauldron will sit on top of. I'm gonna still keep it as a three point so that it will reference the original tripod, but it's an artistic modification, if you will. I'm gonna start out by tracing a clean circle. Nope, too small. Nope, too small. So close. <sighs> Fine, use a compass. Eh, close enough. I'm gonna need to cut out the inside of this using a jigsaw. Nope, not at Disneyland. I don't even like Star Wars. Oh, don't come for me. an angle. I'm just went with 20 degrees and I cut it here at the end. I'm gonna draw a straight line at the lowest point of my angle down the dowel. This line is just gonna give me somewhere to keep that parallel. All right, y'all, so this is where this stands. Uh, I was trying to use what I had and I threw in a red acrylic and then this stand. And what I ended up with is something that looks like a freaking grill and not a cauldron. So now I'm gonna be hiding this ring by adding some fabric that looks like flames. I have an LED light to sink in and I have a new piece of acrylic that is going to be blue so that I can have a better fit to this color scheme. I pulled up some newspaper, stuck it on this cup, threw a little bit of sand in, and threw on some shrink wrap. Cut up my tool that's ready to go, and I have watered down some Elmer's glue. And basically, I'm about to make a giant mess. I have no idea if this is gonna work. I attempted some other thing that was a total crash and burn. Remembered I had these round lights. I have an idea that I think I'm gonna try and make some casings that will go over those round lights to look like little flame balls of fire. And if this works out, they will go around the ring on the outside with some other fabric. gonna trim up any areas that have too much fabric. One of the ends of the fabric ends up having a finished edge. I don't want to have that going for a little bit more of a jagged look. This flowing flame thing happening. That looks good. Oh. 
right. So I need to cover up some of this ring. These will be sitting in between, but I want to get rid of this ring and disguise it a little more. with the way it turned out. It was a little bit of a complicated situation going on with the bottom. It does what I want it to do. It's meant to be a prop type of deal. These are obviously not cocktails. They are just a little bit of playing around with some food coloring. When I do the big food video, I will be doing cocktails definitely for this bar. I have to do midnight margaritas. There's no way I can have a witch themed party and not include midnight margaritas. The apples for the tree, along with all of the other food for the table, it will all be done in a completely separate video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already, and stick around to see more Halloween fun.